Hello again, I'm George Flew and I'm the developer of the 3D Utility Toolbox for 3D Substation Design. And in this video, I will cover Substation Lightning Protection Design. Before starting, however, let's uh, review the Substation Configuration. This is uh, the same Substation we've used in our previous videos. And we're coming into a, a two-bay uh, Substation with 161 kV and stepped it down here to 12 kV where we've got three outgoing underground bays on, the, on this bank and three outgoing overhead bays on this bank. Once again I'm using BrickSCAD from BrickSys and you can find them at BrickSys.com. I find it's an excellent replacement for AutoCAD and the prices are certainly more competitive. Also I want to point out that this is a uh, demo uh, video and not a training video so I won't be going in, into detail in uh, many of the uh, uh, AutoCAD commands. IEEE Standard 998 presents their guide for substation lightning protection. In that they present several methods, but today we're going to be looking at spe specifically one of the empirical design methods. Here they show two that they use the fixed angle method and empirical curves, which are derived from actual field values. We're going to be looking specifically at the fixed angle method. So here's a, their rendition of the fixed angle in which we have a couple of overhead and shield wires that are protecting some some objects there so they they assume a an angle of protection between the the shield wires so in this case you'll see that that the angle alpha is somewhat larger than the angle beta and that assumes that these that when you have two shield wires adjacent to each other that they're they're protection will somewhat overlap. So you see below here their recommendations for the angles alpha and beta. Angle alpha is generally taken to be 45 degrees and that's where these two shield wires are adjacent to each other and then the angle beta can be either 30 or 45 degrees. In our case we'll be using 30 which will recognize that the shielding is not as strong where you have no overlapping shield wires. So with that, we will go ahead and uh, begin our design. First, I want to uh, quick turn on uh, the uh, this layer that I've used in the past as uh, layout uh, layout lines to help locate items in, in the substation. So let's uh, go on to our ortho view here where we can then uh, begin our, our design. The first thing I want to do is pull up our 3D toolbox and here in the structure section I want to go in and select a lightning mass. Now you can see we've got a selection of lightning mass from 55 to 85 feet. For this design 65 will be the size we need. So I'll select the uh, intersection snap point and go ahead and insert our lightning mast. Okay we, we won't need that again. Our initial design we want to look at is to lay out a, a uh, an overhead ground wire that goes directly over the center of the transformer and uh, so we need another attachment point and what we're going to assume is there's a, a dead end pole here where it drops into the station and so we're going to run that uh, the static from here to that dead end point. To simulate that I'm not going to use another static mask because it'll throw off our, our, our bill of material so I'm just going to place a line here uh, and I will just put in a line some random length and then go here and use our uh, properties editor and go down here and what we want to do is, is change this length uh, and to make the all of our calculations just make it simpler in, in, in the design we're going to set that to 64.5 feet 64 and a half feet assuming that's a that's the height of the static that would that's the same height as the static on our lightning mast it's a 65 foot mast and the attachment point is six inches below the top so with that the next thing we want to do is is put in our static we could probably just draw a straight line th between those two points however I I want to go ahead and use a simple sag program uh, that is based on the catenary constant and uh, it then it draws a catenary curve which is made up of a series of p-line segments between two points. So the first thing we really need to know is a catenary constant and that you need to get from a 
design program like Alcoa SAG 10, or in my case, I'm going to be using the uh, PLS CAD uh, Ultralight, which is a free application that gives us the, the information that you can get from SAG 10. Uh, so here, based on our span uh, uh, here between these two poles, which is 207 feet, then then we enter that. Uh, that if this were a transmission line, that would be your ruling span. And we need to go down here and determine which sagging method we're going to use. The auto sag will will load up the uh, conductor to whatever the uh, NESC limits are. I'm actually going to go, put in my own sag here. Uh, that way we can control better the design of, of the lightning mass and reduce the cost. Now, once that's done, uh, what we need, the only other thing we need to do here, well, let me first go back up here and point out that what I'm using here is a 5 16th seven strand high strength steel uh, cable to, for our overhead ground wire. So now we need to go up here and determine what conditions we want to use to sag this in and you in the program as you can see gives you a number of different conditions uh, we obviously don't want to use 120 of the 212 that we normally use for a transmission or distribution line because we're not going to be putting any amperage load on this so we're looking at strictly a temperature loading and uh, we will assume that even on a very hot day if you've got lightning and rain uh, 90 degrees would be uh, kind of an upper limit of what you'd see so based on a 90, 90 degree F and adding in for creep uh, so that we get a final sag. We, again, we want to ignore load, and uh, this is final sag with creep. Uh, we come across here and we see that the catenary constant for this condition is 3,807. So let's go back over here to our sag program, and that's where we want to put in our catenary constant, 3,807. Now, uh, if we were doing a, a single span sag, we would put in a span. Uh, the increment here is, a, is the increment along the sag uh, curve for each uh, each uh, P-line segment. The horizontal span multiplier, usually on a transmission line, you, you are using a 10 to 1 multiplier for the span, horizontal to vertical span. Uh, now, if you don't have this number, if you've got the tension, uh, the horizontal tension and the weight or the load in pounds per foot, you can put this in the... Uh, in here and it will calculate the catenary constant. Uh, these two values are, are calculated once we do the uh, once we do the, the calculation. And then down here we wanted to look whether we're using decimal or engineering units. Uh, to, <clears throat> often for a transmission line you're just using decimal units where a hundred would represent a hundred foot span etc. But here we're actually using engineering units and what we want is the is to use the two point method. Uh, the one span would just actually draw just a single curve. The length of the span, the sag method would actually use on a on a pole line where you'd go from point to point to point to point. But we're just going two points, so we're going to come in here and we're going to select. And on this end, we want to use a node. And there's a node connection over here for the uh, uh, for the connection of your static dead end and then of course over here we use the, the end of uh, this this line and there we get our sag curve and if we look at it uh, uh, from from this direction you can see that it is made up of a number of different a number of segments uh, this 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 point right here would be the low point on the on this curve you can see it's it's a uh, it's not a full uh, 10 foot unit between between points as it is through here. So there we have our 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 conductor sagged in. Uh, now we want to go to our to our fixed angle method. So first thing I want to do here is uh, excuse me, uh, get the right view. Uh, we need to draw uh, our our shield curve uh, shield lines. Uh, along here and recognizing that there, there will be another lightning mast over here in shield wire so on this side we'll have 45 degrees this side to be 15 now in order to draw that line we really need to have our our UCS uh, we need to have this in the XY plane to simplify that uh, that that uh, 
construction and we simply the UCS command and uh, here we want it to just be uh, the view that we're looking at so we use the, the view option on UCS. So now we need to uh, start with putting in our shield lines. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take move this slightly so I can get to the right the correct uh, point on here when I do this so so we're just simply going to draw a line at this point and it's going to start here at this node uh, so that's why I want to pick the correct node now if we go down here and we look at our XY coordinate uh, we want to go 30 degrees in this direction so that would be that would be an angle that would be 90 so it would be minus 120 degrees so we're going to come down here and, and select the option down here in our command line of angle and uh, we're going to make it minus 120 since AutoCAD normally uh, positive is in a counterclockwise direction now you can set that so it may be different uh, you may have it set otherwise and so we're going to an angle of minus 120 and the length of that line uh, let's just make it 70 feet that'll get us pretty well far enough down here to, to give us a uh, uh, give us our coverage now let me uh, something I should have done is let's go over here and let's set this uh, I've got some layers set up for my lightning protection so let's set it to L1 and then let's go back over here and let's go ahead and change this to uh, the L using again our our properties editor and change that to L1 so now we're ready to put our other fixed angle line in and so that one will be going 45 degrees in this bottom right coordinate so again let's do line and we'll just start here with the end of this this one and uh, we'll tell it an angle of minus 45 degrees and the length of that line let's just make that 60 feet and I think that will be adequate for what we're doing so now we have our two shield lines now we need to to make a surface out of those and uh, there's a uh, simple command in AutoCAD and BricsCAD called uh, sweep so we'll select those two lines and tell it to sweep and it will then ask for the path that we want to sweep it on and the path then would be our our uh, overhead ground wire and so here you see we've got we've got this uh, two nice surfaces that, that show the coverage underneath and of course unfortunately we have a portion of this bus that is sticking uh, out in the uh, in the unshielded area so what we will do at this point is uh, we'll look for the uh, solution and the, the simplest solution simply would be to uh, move this static pole up this way until we get until such time as we get coverage over all of this so we'll do that let me make one quick I want to lock down this base layer uh, because I'm going to be making some selections and I don't want to pick anything on that on that layer. Now, since we want to rotate this, uh, we the simplest way is if we're in the XY plane. So I'm going to again rotate the UCS to the view that we're looking at so that here we are in the XY plane. And then I'm going to simply select the items I want to rotate. Come down here. I want to swivel around this point, this drop-in pole and uh, tell it to rotate and then we can simply rotate this up until the until this 12 kV is covered 12 kV bay is covered and if we swing around here and uh, and just quickly look under you can see that we've got we've got plenty of coverage on that with at this location now the, the what, what we need to do at this point is to uh, create coverage for this other side the other half of the station and that's that's simply going to be done by just duplicating what we have here to this side so I'm going to again select these and I'm going to tell it to mirror this time and uh, the mirror line there's a center line in there so I'm going to We'll pick the end of there's a line that's this this it that's at the center of the substation and then I'll come out here horizontally and select and say okay and now you see we've got complete coverage of our structures and bus on the on this on the substation here. Uh, 
look underneath you can see that everything under here is there, there appears to be a little a bit of the uh, that this is the arc of that switch as it opens and closes so I, I guess uh, you maybe you'd be wise to if you're opening and closing that switch during a th thunderstorm to be quick about it uh, but other than that everything is under the surfaces so you see we have complete protection of the substation here so that's the fixed angle method and uh, uh, it's 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 a method that's been used now since the early uh, early 20th century so uh, there are plenty of substations and, and transmission lines that have been designed and protected based on this approach and uh, it seems to have worked quite well so with that, uh, we can call this done. And as always, I'd like to encourage you that if you have a question or a comment, you can go to my website, the3dutility.com. And in the upper right corner is a contact button on the menu that you can simply uh, send me a contact. And if, uh, if you want to reply, be sure to include your, your email address. So with that, until the next time, thank you. Bye-bye.